In this tutorial, we're going to create a flexible transition shader like this one that you can then animate using a texture. If I go to my transition color here to the material slot, I can replace the texture with one of the masks in the demo, like these shards here, and get really flexible transitions. You can create anything you want. And in the next video, we're going to create an outline shader. As usual, you can find the sources on GitHub. This time it's one demo, but here we're going to code things along and I'm going to explain how the system works and the few ways you can create this transition shader. So let's start by creating a color rectangle node. We're going to set it to take the full screen, full rectangle in an empty scene. Its color will be the color of the transition. So we can start with black. Now we're going to create our material, so head down to the material category next to canvas item and we're going to create a new shader material. We're going to code it by hand and in there you want to create a new shader as well. Let's save the scene just for the sake of it, so color rectangle will do the trick for now and click our shader to open the shader editor. I'm going to zoom out a little bit on the screen and have more space for the shader editor. All right, so you have to start by specifying the shader type every time and our will be canvas item. This is the type for 2D shaders. We can also set a render mode to start with and there's the unshaded keyword that indicates that we don't want this material to interact with Godot's lighting system, be it in 2D or in 3D. So this one will be unaffected by light. Now we're going to create a fragment shader, one that controls pixels one by one. But before we fill in the fragment function, we're going to add a few parameters from the start that we will want to work with. The first one, we'll call it the cutoff. This is the progression of the transition and the separation point between the pixels that get shown and the pixels that get hidden or that are transparent based on the mask. So it, it's a threshold if you want. Every value that's below the threshold or the cutoff will be invisible and every value that's above it will be visible or vice versa depending on how you code it. We use a colon to specify a hint that we will then find in our material. So if we save our shader, I'm going to save it as a resource and call it transition and go back to the material. Now we have shader parameters available and we have a cutoff. With our hint range between zero and one, we can only set the cutoff as a percentage value, a progress value between zero and one. We need a second value and this one's going to be a texture, a slot or a texture. So the type for textures is sampler 2D for shaders and we're going to call it our mask, our transition mask. As far as the hint is concerned, you want to use hint albedo, which is the one you use for textures. So now let's save, go back in the history to our shader parameters and now there's an empty mask here. If you have the demo, go down to the shaders folder, mask, and drag and drop, for example, the curtain inside of there. Now a shader still does not do anything. We're going to code the logic. For now, we're going to code basic harsh transitions using an if else statement. Remember that fragment scans every pixel on the screen. And for each pixel on the screen, we're going to sample our texture, so our mask. We're going to store the results in a float. It's going to give us a value, a grayscale value. We use the texture function to sample a sampler 2D, which our mask is. So we're going to sample our mask using the UVs of that color rectangle or the sprite the shader is applied to. The texture lookup function is going to get a color, a vector for value, but we want a float. So we're only going to grab the red channel to start with. This will give us a grayscale range. Now we can use an if else logic to set the color based on a comparison between our cutoff here and our value. We're going to say if the value that we get for each pixel sampled from the texture is lower than the cutoff, then 
we're going to set the output color of our shader to a vector 4. So we're going to use the color.rgb and for the alpha we'll use 0.0. .0. Else, if uh, the value is greater than the cutoff threshold, we're going to set the color to something similar but with an alpha of 1. Okay, save the shader, go back to the material, and now when you animate the cutoff, as it goes up, you get the transition, image becomes transparent. You can reverse the logic to reverse the progression, so 0 is full transparent, and 1 will close the curtain instead, or you can just animate from the value of 1 down to 0 to create a transition in instead of a transition out. Okay, so we can code the transition this way to get a harsh transition, but it turns out there is a function built into GLSL or the shader language that we can use to simplify these operations. So let us scrap all that. I'm just going to keep a color assigned statement here at the end, and we're going to calculate our alpha value in a separate variable. We're going to use the step function. So set alpha to a step and step compares two value. It's going to take some threshold like our cutoff and a value, our texture lookup in this case. And with just that, if I assign alpha to the output color, we can see some change already. If the value is lower than the cutoff, in this case, it's going to be invisible. And if we lower the cutoff to zero, as the value becomes greater than the cutoff, it's going to become one. Okay, so step is going to output zero or one based on the comparison. And you can invert the two values to reverse the behavior. So it allows us to control the transition with just one line of code. Okay, back to our if-else clumsy logic for a second. What if you want to have smooth transitions? Because it's fine and dandy right now, but if I zoom in, the transition is pretty noisy, right? So with that logic, we can create an elif block where we check if the value is within a certain range between the cutoff and the length of the smooth transition that we want. So we use the cutoff plus the transition range, smooth transition range, minus the value divided by the size of that smooth transition. This gives us an interpolated value between 0 and 1. Now there again, you don't need that logic, even if you can find it in some shaders on the internet. GLSL comes with a function called smooth step that allows us to do it a lot more easily. So we're going to calculate our alpha again. I'm going to add my color back here, my color assignment. It's going to be color.rgb. We use the alpha value as the alpha, okay? And we're going to use smooth step. Here we are on the Book of Shaders, a great website where you can find really technical information about shaders, how they work, and here's some explanation about smooth step. So smooth step is going to take two values that define a range. So to define that range, we're going to use a new uniform. We're going to call it smooth range or something like that. Let's create the floating smooth size, for example, and we're going to use the hint range again. We're going to make it clamp between 0 and 1. And now we can use the smooth step function. So we take a range between the cutoff and the cutoff plus the smooth size. And we're going to compare our value to that. Now the smooth size is at 0 at the moment. So go back to the material, increase the smooth size, and you should see a soft transition appear. There might be some artifacts if the transition is really small. It's mostly due to the size of the texture that gets stretched over the canvas right now because these are square and fairly small textures, 512 squared. So you may get that, but as long as the smooth size is big enough, you won't have too much trouble, especially when it's animated. But you will have trouble with one thing though, when the cutoff is set at zero, we get a gap. And that's something we have to fix. The reason is when our cutoff 
is at zero. If we have a smooth size of 0.1, we are making a soft transition from zero to one on the alpha between the values of zero, so pure black on our texture, to 0.1, very dark gray, meaning we're going to have a little bit of our texture here that's considered as being transparent. So we're going to scale our value to make sure that it starts like we remap our black, our value of zero, to a value of cutoff plus the smooth size, the starting point, so that this area when the cutoff is at zero is going to be black. So here's how you can do this. You're going to add the smooth size to the value to make sure that the starting value is at least smooth size. So when the cutoff is zero, the texture doesn't show at all. But if you only do that, you get an issue then when the cutoff is at one, because you are offsetting the range of values from the texture. And so we've got to multiply the value to scale its range. So the value is a value between zero and one at the moment. So we multiply it by one minus the smooth size. Say if smooth size is 0.2, value will become a value between 0 and 0 0.8 plus the smooth size so it will become a range between 0 0.2 and 1.0 making sure that when we animate the cutoff from 0 to 1 we get this result we're going to get the perfect transition that we are looking for and there you go this is how you create a smooth transition shader three lines of code it's not that complex now, as I showed you at the start of the video, the thing about it is that you can animate the value from the animation editor, the animation player, or you can use the tween node. You can even animate the smooth size if you want, but more importantly, you can create a key for the cutoff. You can also change the mask on the fly. So if you want a vertical transition or a horizontal one, you just have to change the texture and you will get that as a result. The shards, are one of the more complex examples where you can create a really custom animation for combat transitions in an RPG. In the next video, we'll see how to create that outline shader that allows you to create dynamic outlines or glowing effects around objects. You can support the channel and improve your Godot skills by getting our Godot course. And that said, be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.